And I shoot my shot, it's the whole wild way it's going in. Cross niggas like Bubba Chuck, I never gave a fuck. Hook shot a hole like Kareem, but I never lead a fuck. I hit that Janobi with my left hand all like, woo! Bitch, you want when we shooting in the gym? Wrong night, fuck and form like Mike. Anyone, Tyson, Jordan, Jackson, action. James Harden with the range, don't be nigga way back. Michael Jordan, 1985, bitch, I travel with a cocaine circus. And you can live through anything if magic made it. Man, money ain't got no owners, only spenders. What up, my fellow Nick fans? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease, and don't panic quite yet. Now, in the first few days of the free agency period, it seems like Leon Rose is beginning to expose his poker hand, and the cards in his deck is beginning to look like summer 2021, going after the free agents in that star-studded list. We'll touch base on how the Knicks still spent money this offseason, but they did it in a very strategic way in order to gain some assets and keep their flexibility going into that offseason. And speaking of flexibility going into summer 2021, the Knicks weren't the only teams trying to maintain it. There were other teams lingering around, actually pretty more competitive teams that were actually signing guys but restructuring their contracts to give those teams leverage going into that free agency period. And what a free agent pickup for the Knicks in getting Nerlens Noel. We'll talk about what it means off the court because with the new addition of clutch sports into the agent industry, they sort of become a disruptor to the old guard of the previous agency firms. And now the fans today get to see almost overtly of how the politics of these different agencies competing against each other really affects the roster construction of a lot of these NBA teams. I mean, we've always heard about it in the past, but now we're seeing it play out right in front of our faces due to the way that Clutch Sports uses social media and the interest that they do get because of the LeBron James Association. And finally, I'll touch base on the rookie extension deadline. The Knicks only have until December 21st at 11.59 p.m. before the start of the season to extend their younger guys. If they don't, the younger guys are going to head into restricted free agency. As the Knicks do have have about 18 million dollars left over in their cap from the free agency period and will they actually use that on their younger core or trade for a more seasoned player that could fill up that cap space and complement the younger players on the team as this will affect guys like dsj kevin knox frank nilakina and mitchell robinson but before i get to all that i'd like you guys to check out in the description below my weekly gems got a lot of good stuff in there got motivational stuff business stuff fashion, healthy eating, weekly music playlist. You guys can check it out in the description below. You can download it straight into your phone. And some of you guys have told me you are not getting notifications on episode drops. So sign up for my weekly newsletter so you can stay in the know. So entering the free agency period, the Knicks, the Hawks, and the Pistons all had the most to spend as far as cap space. And pretty much the Hawks did set the tone. They recently just signed Bogdan in a four year, $72 million deal. They got Gallinari, Rajon Rondo. They pretty much set the tone, but the Knicks were very frivolous on how they spent their money this offseason. We've heard of them chasing guys like Fred Van Vliet and even Gordon Hayward. But once negotiations started hitting a certain price, we seen the Knicks kind of back off. And for the first time, we seen the Knicks kind of pull a small market NBA franchise move, which is a team that has a lot of cap space, but they're starting to leverage their cap space in order to gain players that other teams don't want. And those teams are also willing to give assets away to the other team in this particular situation, the Knicks. They're willing to give assets away to the Knicks in order to take on that salary cap. And then we turn around and take that kind of veteran guy and then sell him off to another team that's possibly trying to compete right now. We've seen this play out with the Ed Davis trade from the Utah Jazz. The Knicks traded for him and got two second round picks in order to take on his salary. And then we are able to trade him once again to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And we got a stretch four in Spellman, and we were able to acquire another second round pick. 
the reason why the Utah Jazz was willing to give away two picks in order for us to take them on is because they were trying to sign Jordan Clarkson and they were trying to sign Donovan Mitchell to his extension and they're possibly going to try to resign Rudy Gobert. Now this past season in 2020, we've seen the Memphis Grizzlies have a lot of cap space and they utilized it by taking on Andre Iguodala from Golden State and taking his cap hit and they got a free draft pick out of doing that. And they were also able to send Andre Iguodala to a contending team in the Miami Heat and obtain another draft pick. So this type of strategy, the Knicks for the first time, we're seeing them utilize this type of strategy in a long time because the Knicks are used to having cap space and quickly throwing the money at some guy in the offseason trying to make a splash, which has been a tactic of Steve Mills under his reign for a long time. And now we're seeing the Knicks actually have more strategy because they're negotiating deals in multiple steps because you already know they had an end game for Ed Davis to trade him again and get another asset. And also remember Walt Perriman, one of the scouts recently hired by Leon Rose, he worked for the Utah Jazz for about 20 years. So this guy has a lot of connections in the Midwest all the way to the West Coast, which is pretty much a hotbed for NBA players right now. So outside of leveraging their cap space, the Knicks did have their hand in the pot to spend a bit of the money but it seemed like guys' prices got way too high, especially Gordon Haywood at his price point. Of course, Michael Jordan has to pay more money in order to get players down in Charlotte, so that was out of our range. I was a bit shocked at the deal Gallinari got, but the last few seasons, he's been killing it from three. But then again, the Hawks, they're trying to win right now. They promised Trey Burke that they was going to put some good pieces around him, and they definitely set the tone in the free agency period because they also signed Bogdan Bondanovic after the Sacramento Kings and Bucks trade mishap. They got him for four years, $72 million, which is another small forward that was taken off the board. And the Knicks had plenty of small forwards this free agency period to choose from that can stretch the floor, especially from three. But the timing wasn't right and the price points wasn't right because Joe Harris signed a mega deal with the Brooklyn Nets to stay there. Also, Breton signed an $80 million deal with the Wizards. They're finally spending money after getting rid of guys, aka Kelly Oubre and Otto Porter Jr. So it's about time they started spending money to surround John Wall and Bradley Beal, even though it's rumored that John Wall is about to leave. But once again, all this comes down to timing. And it seems like a lot of these teams, they wanted to either retain their guys or there was other teams in a different position, aka the Atlanta Hawks. They want to put a winning team around Trey Young now. So in a way, I kind of want to say big up to Leon Rose and his team to kind of stay disciplined and understanding that the landscape just didn't really call for the Knicks to just go deep into their pockets in order to pay guys. And that there was a bigger picture, which is 2021 where there's major difference makers that's gonna enter the market, opposed to guys that are just kind of B-level good, but because there's no other great free agents available, they kind of get overpriced. So at a time like this, and especially in particular, a season like this, it's not bad to stay committed to the young guys because technically this will be the second NBA season in which we'll see bottom teams actually kind of compete in a playoff style atmosphere because the seventh, through 10 seeds will all have to play knockout rounds. So it's more experience, especially if you're a mid-level team in which we are, we're always hovering around that, you know, 12, 11, you know, around that range, we've been hovering around that. And it wouldn't be bad to get young guys to at least aim to get into the knockout rounds and participate in that. And potentially even having more opportunity to gain more experience by making the eighth seed or even seventh seed. So not only the young guys on the Knicks this season can have a lot to aim for, but the organization could also benefit because this year's draft in 2021 is very deep and has a lot of generational league changing talent. So this could be a win-win for the organization. So because there wasn't any way for us to get guys this offseason at bargain deals, it seems like maintaining cap flexibility was the Knicks' number one priority afterwards because we're only a few days into the free agency period and more than half the roster isn't even committed past 2021. All the new signees got basically one-year deals. Even though Austin Rivers got a three-year deal, I heard the last two years is not even guaranteed. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Like, damn, the Knicks are going once again, doing this whole one-year deal shit when players are always bitching about it. No one knows their role. No one knows if they're going to even be there the next season. 
So they come into the current season feeling a type of way. This shit has a long history of just not working out with the Knicks. So you're wondering why they're still going out of their way to do the same thing over and over. But best believe there's a lot of teams going out their way to make sure that they're freed up for 2021. We got even competing teams like the Miami Heat, the Dallas Mavericks. They, they have one max slot available right now as we speak, even though they do have pieces around to compete right now. You can also look at the way the Toronto Raptors organized Fred Van Vliet's contract. They organized the years according to making sure that the summer 2021, they have more flexibility. So the first year of his contract, he makes 21 million. But then in the second year, where that summer of 2021 hits, his salary actually goes down just so they can have some extra money to spend that summer because they have the intention of going after a max guy. So the urgency around summer 2021 is important because teams right now are structuring their new deals with current players based on that free agency period. The only thing that sucks about this, we're going to see a lot of guys get let go. Bobby P, his option didn't get picked up. Damian Dotson, Maurice Harkless, Taj Gibson, Wayne Ellington. I mean, especially Damian Dotson. I hate to see guys like that go. And who knows, depending on how successful we are in next year's free agency, we might be letting go of some of our favorite young guys, like Frank Nilakina, Mitchell Robinson, Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr. They're all pretty much locked in for this season, but they do have rookie extensions and fourth year rookie options that have to be picked up by the Knicks before the start of next season, which will be very interesting to watch how this plays out because the Knicks right now, they have $18 million left over in the cap that they have to spend. So I'm wondering if they're going to start spending that money on some of their young guys before the start of the season, or are they going to make a trade perhaps to get a more seasoned veteran on the team? Now, looking at the case of Dennis Smith Jr. and Frank Nilakina, they're approaching their final year on their rookie contracts, and the Knicks will have until December 21st to either give these guys an extension or they'll hit the mark and become an unrestricted free agent. Both of these guys are going to have to come into the season very sharp, especially it's going to be a shortened season. So they're going to have to prove their worth right away, especially Dennis Smith Jr. He's going to have to stay very, very healthy and consistent on both ends of the court and his decision making got to improve. Frank Nilakinia of the two has a better chance of getting extended because he can actually play defense and guard multiple positions in the floor. It's actually something you could point to and ask yourself, okay, Frank Nilakinia can do this pretty well, but I can't say the same thing for Dennis Smith Jr. They're going to have a lot of competition, especially Dennis Smith Jr. with Austin Rivers being signed to the team. And he's also going to have to compete against Alfred Payton and Alec Burke. Frank Nilakinia, I can't say so much because he can guard multiple positions once again, and he does a few different things. And what the team is basically asking of him is a lot different than what they're asking of Dennis Smith Jr. Also, a bonus that's going for Frank Nilakinia is that out of all the guards that the Knicks have, he is the best defensive option at that position. Now, looking at Kevin Knox, the Knicks have until the 21st to renew his fourth year on his rookie scale contract. And if not, he'll enter the summer of 2021 as a restricted free agent. Now, Kevin Knox's situation is very unique because last season, the Knicks had spent most of their free agency money on players at his position. And in this current season, the Knicks had drafted another rookie that can take over his minutes at that position in Obi Toppin. And they also spent money on Norris Noel, who defensively is probably the better of the two. So Kevin Knox this season, he's going to have to be very consistent, especially with that three-point shot he's been working on. And also defensively, he's going to have to be consistent night in and night out. He can't have those nights where you don't know what you're going to get from him. And finally, the Knicks will be looking either to pick up Mitchell Robinson's fourth year on his rookie deal or do him a favor by letting him hit the restricted market. Because he was a second round draft pick, he's going to be making a lot less money than he normally would. I believe in a circumstance like this, normally a team would actually give him a longer extension. But if the Knicks don't decide to do that before the start of the season, they're going to let him hit the market as a restricted free agent. And I believe if they are successful in that free agency, that they will be allowed to go over the cap and re-sign Mitchell Robinson and match any offer that Mitchell Robinson gets from other teams. Now, Mitchell Robinson this offseason will have to show improvement in which he can play more minutes at the center position without getting into foul trouble and play it consistently, especially without getting hurt. Now, it'll be very interesting to see how this situation with Mitchell Robinson plays out 
because the Knicks during the draft, it's very unusual, but they try to draft a traditional big in Vernon Carey. He eventually got drafted one pick before the Knicks at number 32 when we had the 33rd pick. And then once he got drafted, we quickly got rid of that 33rd pick. But Vernon Carey is a very traditional big, you know, nothing but low post game. He can only guard other centers. He's not going to come out to the perimeter and guard guys against threes, unlike Mitchell Robinson. But I found it very interesting that they try to draft a traditional big. I'm wondering if they're trying to get him as a backup plan just in case they're not able to match any offers Mitchell Robinson gets in the open market. But I'm also wondering if they try to get a backup center just in case the politics of where Mitchell Robinson is signed to in his agency, aka Clutch Sports, it ends up not working out with the Knicks. And this pretty much brings me to the final thing I wanted to touch base on was the politics of these sports agencies. We've seen the Knicks this offseason actually bring in a, a client of Clutch Sports in Nerlens Noel onto the team on a one-year deal. Now, Nerlens Noel is not the first Nick to be part of Clutch Sports. We had other Knicks players that were already drafted by the team, and then they became part of Clutch Sports afterwards. And I'm talking about Alonzo Trier and Mitchell Robinson. But they were already on the team and had a loyalty to the team for drafting them. But Nerlens Noel is one of the... I would say more bigger names from Clutch Sports to sign with the Knicks, basically coming into the team as an outsider. Now, of course, the Knicks are CAA affiliated. Everyone from Leon Rose to World Wide West to Mike Woodson to Kenny Payne and even their new signee, Austin Rivers. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because you remember that time when Phil Jackson ran the Knicks for a little bit and he made that comment about Rich Paul and LeBron James and their posse. And then LeBron James made the comment, the Knicks should have drafted Dennis Smith Jr. and not Frank Nilekina. That little rift, in my view, added an extra layer of tension or rivalry or whatever you want to call it between the CAA affiliated Knicks and Clutch Sports. Now I understand Clutch Sports is a brand new agency and have still not yet seen one of their top agents even make an attempt at the Knicks it's still early, but pay very close attention to guys like Trey Young because he has put the Hawks on notice. This is why they're spending all that money in this year's free agency, and he definitely wants to win now. But if that does not work out, the Knicks are always looking for a point guard. And when he recently signed with Clutch Sports, I thought in the back of my mind, that might not happen now. But you guys pay very close attention to that scenario because it's always been said throughout the years by various media members that certain agencies had complete control of how a lot of NBA teams were built. And with the introduction of Clutch Sports, especially into the social media mainframe, because they're one of the very few agencies that are very active in social media and the way they market themselves and promote their players. We could actually see for the first time in real time, the influence that agencies have on a lot of these teams that used to play out behind the scenes, now will eventually play out through social media. And that even the most nuanced fan could begin to start picking it up. So depending on Norris Noel's experience with the Knicks, good or bad, it's going to have an influence on Clutch Sports recommending their top level talent to look in the direction of the Knicks. And Clutch's influence going forward is going to be important. Make no mistake about it. They are an industry disruptor right now, like how Netflix has done to Hollywood how Amazon has done to retail, Uber Eats, how it affected the restaurant business, or like how Uber affected travel and Airbnb changed the hotel business. So in regards to Clutch Sports, a lot of agencies are definitely shook that they have entered the market. I mean, you can tell from the response that Clutch Sports had gotten when they held the recent workout for some of their draftees. The timing, the marketing, everything was brilliant about what they did, especially to promote their brand. And they definitely have the influence with LeBron James. So a lot of the newer talent that's gonna come into the league, they're definitely gonna be intrigued by Clutch Sports. And they're gonna have a stronger foothold within the industry. This is definitely something worth paying attention to because as LeBron James' social media popularity grows, Clutch is gonna grow along with it. And the Knicks gonna have to pay attention to it because if it's not handled properly, it's definitely gonna be a thorn on their side. It is what it is. Until next time, you guys stay safe. Peace.